You know, people always ask me what 3D printing is actually useful for. In this series, I'm going to show them, starting with this. Okay, now obviously I didn't make this whole thing with my 3D printer, even though there is an open RC project out there where you can 3D print a whole remote controlled car. This is a VCAR Bison version 2 and I got it from Gearbest or Banggood, can't remember which, and it was about $400 and out of the box it's really really fun and really really fast. Stock it comes with a 3 cell battery and it's meant to be capable of around 70 kilometers an hour which I think is pretty damn impressive. Anyway, don't take my word for it, check out what this thing can do. Before I purchased mine I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and most of them seemed to think that it was pretty strong, but the trouble is there's one weak link that constantly breaks and that is the suspension, bushing and pin. So it doesn't take much of a hit on the front of the car to snap the little pin that holds the wishbone in place and then you're left with this. Oh. Floppy front wheel, drive shaft fallen out, unable to drive the car. Now this thing is compatible with a Hellion RC car and all the parts are interchangeable but they are expensive and they are hard to find. So you might end up being actually stuck with a car that's broken for a long time and that could make it obsolete. If you never get to drive it, well it's a complete waste of money and resources. Enter a 3D printer. First let me show you what the stock parts look like and then I'll show you what I designed to replace it. Here is the exploded diagram in the manual and there is the pin that breaks with the bushings either side. The manual states that it's 3 mils diameter by 46. Here is a standard bushing in pretty good condition and this is what they look like after a couple of crashes. The pin rips it on its way out. Here I substitute threaded rod to show how it sits and I did use threaded rod for a while and then that kept on bending like you see here. So it was time to switch to something much much stronger. So here is the finished part I ended up with after designing in on shape. It's only got three features that make it up. First of all you had a sketch. And if we spin that around, you can see there's not even that many measurements. I had used vernier calipers to size up the original bushing, and then I drew it all on one flat sketch. After that, I did two extrudes. The first to do the outer base, the part that sticks out to help it locate. And then secondly, I extruded the rest up to a height of four and a half millimeters. I did iterate several times. I had a version that was above five, but was sticking out a little bit too far and I couldn't get the nut on far enough to do its job. So 4.5 is what I settled on. You can always scale this print if you're going to attempt it yourself only on the Z axis and that will shorten it without changing the X and the Y dimensions and that should keep it nice and accurate for you. Once it was designed I exported and I was ready to 3D print. Here I have six of the parts set up in Simplify 3D. Might as well print them with a couple of spares. As you can see up in the top corner, it's predicting only three minutes for six of these. On the print bed now, almost at the end, I used the Prusa i3 Mark III and it did a beautiful job. Here it is finishing and moving out of the way. And then the final parts are revealed in all of their glory. Look at that quality. 
The top surface is the only thing you can really complain about. From the side, it is stunning. This here is what we're going to replace the stock pin with. It's an M3x50 bolt with an M3 nylock nut. I would strongly recommend getting a 3mm drill bit and cleaning up the hole just to make sure everything's going to slide through nicely. Alright, so let's begin the disassembly. I've already removed my pieces down the bottom and you'll find after they're installed it's much, much faster to change them. So I've taken out the pins and off comes the shell of the car. We're going to get our Allen key and we need to take off our four hex screws on the top here. Would help if I had the right size. Okay, now this front bumper section can be removed and I don't want to disconnect the wiring, I'm just going to leave it dangling in there like that. You'll notice that there are two different sizes for the bolts. The longer ones go at the front, shorter ones go at the rear, so keep that in mind for later on. The next two things we need to disassemble are these two black hex bolts here and they hold on this front metallic frame and that's what we need to release the pin that would usually be in place here. Okay, so you can see I've got this loose here. I don't think there's actually any point in me removing it, but if you're performing the mod that I'm showing you here, this will be the last time that you need to remove it, because after that, everything will be able to be done without pulling off anything on the nose of the car, without even taking off the shell, in fact. So it's a pretty big improvement in terms of functionality if you do end up breaking the piece. So I'm gonna screw mine back together. Also gonna put back together the front bumper. Okay, so we've got the front end back together minus the new modification, so let's do that now. We're gonna start by flipping the car upside down. And you will notice here on these parts, they're actually elongated, they're an oval shape, which means if you wanted to put the straight bolt through, they're gonna have room to wobble. And that's gonna introduce that same wobble into your suspension geometry, which is gonna make for unpredictable handling. So we're trying to avoid that altogether. So what we do is include our new 3D printed part and there is a wide bit and a narrow bit. The wide bit is gonna go from the inside out for both of them and then our hole is offset. We want that to face towards the outside of the car. So I'll try and do this without my finger blocking the way but we're gonna spin it around, rotate it until it lines up. Okay, and you can see it's in place there. We've got our hole facing the outside and our large flat surface facing the inside towards the wishbone. We're gonna repeat that for all three. Okay, we have the printed parts in place. Now it's a matter of taking the drive shaft and rotating the wheel if you need to and lining it back up so it can slot in. And then one side at a time, we're gonna bring the wishbone into position and then we're gonna take one of our M50 high tensile bolts and we're gonna feed it from the front and slide it through. Would help to get the hex key at this point and if it feels a little bit tight, twisting to the right, we'll get it moving as well as just giving it a little bit of a shove. Success, mine is poking through. So now I'm going to take a M3 washer slide it on, and then an M3 lock nut. And it's extremely important that this is a lock nut, otherwise the vibrations will make it come loose. Alternatively, if you don't have lock nuts, you can use some Loctite on the thread, but this is by far the easiest way. That's one side on, let's go for the other. once come through it was a little bit annoying but we got there now our washer and once again our m3 nylock nut it's now time to introduce some pliers and we need to do this to make sure these are tight we're aiming to do these up to the point where the end of the bolt actually protrudes through the end of the nut that way we know it's got a full grab of the nylock and it's not going to vibrate loose I used to do it with an extra washer installed it didn't poke through quite enough and one time it did vibrate loose 
Nothing got damaged, but I had to wait till I got home to fix it. So I recommend only one washer on one side. Otherwise you can switch to M3 by 55 or longer bolts and they'll reach with a washer on both sides. Once they're in, you wanna check that the suspension can move. I think technically, if you did it too tight, it would squeeze on that wishbone and prevent it from moving freely, but I think mine's moving freely here. And I have my thread just sticking through either side of the nut. And this is finished. Shell can go back on and it's ready to drive. So you might be asking just how strong is it? Well, a secret for you is that all of the footage that you saw earlier was recorded with this already in place and it survived both the three cell and the four cell battery. And if you read on the forums for this car, people say that as soon as you put on the four cell, it will break. And you can see the tires are ballooning like crazy and it seems like something wants to let go, but so far so good, this has held up. If you wanna see the type of abuse and crashes that it survived during this test run, well, check out this. Next thing you might be asking is, is it strong enough? It's only 3D printed and you only did it in PLA. Well, yes, that's true. I consider this part like a fuse. Even though it's plastic and it's printed, it's sitting inside a metal housing. So the metal is kind of like a jacket holding it in place and strengthening it. And if something is to break, I prefer it to be the 3D printed part because one of the advantages of this system is these are extremely small and that means fast to print and minimal use of plastic. So I can print out a full set of these in about 10 minutes. And I do actually have some spare sitting here in case I have breakages. Compare that to trying to track down and then waiting for these tiny little parts to come from overseas. The parts that we've replaced are now readily available and we can make as many of the little bushings as we want ourselves on the 3D printer. Even though this was a tiny part, it's actually a very vital one for keeping this thing going. For this reason alone, I think this is a great example of how 3D printing can be used for real world authentic design problems. So that wraps it up for this episode, but there will be much more in this series. There's a whole host of things that I've printed in my life because I needed them. And 3D printing was by far the most efficient way. I'd say in time, if you do things like this, your 3D printer will pay for itself. And all of those naysayers who say it's just for printing trinkets off Thingiverse, well, show them these type of projects and maybe you'll be able to convert them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.